I have been, <coughs> I have been, I always thought, how can a woman who never ever had her own clothes can afford to send her own son to Harvard or University of Pennsylvania for doctorate? has so much commitment and her belief in Dr. Ambedkar's faith. Many of you know the, the son, her son is sitting here talking to you. I am, I am her youngest son. This is her faith in Ambedkar. This is her faith in Indian government, who has given the opportunities to go to Pursuit School. When I offer her, I'm here in 10 years, when I offer every time, any time she is in trouble, she doesn't take a single dollar. <coughs> she says, if you want to succeed in your life, till your last breath, you have to work harder and harder and harder. We came here, if you want to change people's lives, all of us, just that small teaching that we, as a leader, we have larger responsibilities. There are 300 million women like her in India looking forward, like leaders like here, to bring change in their lives. When I came inside the United Nations, I always, because 2006, I started working with WHO in Switzerland. I saw there were very uh, 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 charters were on the door, and I think we need those words back in the United Nations doors here. We, the peoples of the United Nations, determined. It's just a reiteration to remind us why we are here and why we have. Madam Mohammed, who is herself a woman, to remind all of us that we, the people of the United Nations, determined to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of human person. As you mentioned in the USA, it's all about dignity and human worth. And for these ends, we all all the member states and everybody who was all over the world for the United Nations to employ international machinery. We are going to employ international machinery for the pro promotion of the economic and social advancement of all people. It's for all people. Even though the United Nations is an organization of states, the charter is written very clear. We, the people, people. It's, it reaffirms the dignity, worth of human person, respect for human rights, and the equal rights of men and women, and the commitment to social progress as measured by better standards of life. In freedom from want to want and fear alike, Ultimately, that the United Nations exists. This whole United Nations exists and must serve the needs and hopes of people everywhere. It's not about just one country. It's for 7.5 billion people all over the world. In the end, I would like to revisit today's topic. Technological advance is its paradox. We all heard from Madam that technology has been changing all over the world and helping our people. But many of us, or many of the world leaders, has mentioned this again and again and again that despite greater connectivity, societies are becoming more fragmented. More and more people live within their own bubbles. And if you walk out of this room, you will see that bubbles. Even you, when you walk in your own communities, you will see and witness this bubble. And it's very, very important for the marginalized sections 
to get 